Hi everybody, welcome to Mac 366 week 7. Apologies if I'm a little bit late getting this video out to you. This week has been a little bit busy. Um, right, what are we looking at this week? Well, we are looking at the figure of the vampire in particular. We're looking at the movie Let the Right One In. Um, but we, you know, we can address vampire fiction more generally in the, the webinar. Uh, but I've got a couple of things I'd like you to think about if you haven't already seen this film. Or if you have seen this film, you can reflect upon these right now uh, or before the class starts on Friday. So the film in question is Let the Right One In. Uh, if you have never seen this, you're in for a treat. This is a, a film that was adapted from the very popular 2004 Swedish novel by the writer jean avid Linkvist, uh, by the director Thomas Alfredson. Uh, I think the film followed maybe four years after the, the popular book uh, came out. Uh, and it concerns the, the, a story about uh, a, young, a young person, uh, a young, young boy, 12-year-old I believe he is, uh, a little boy called Oscar, who was relentlessly bullied uh, and finds some solace in a, with a neighbourhood friend who's recently moved into the, into the, the, uh, the Stockholm, suburbs, the suburbs of Stockholm, I believe, moved into a housing estate uh, and he, he strikes a bond with this, this uh, uh, young girl uh, called Eli. It's a relatively unusual vampire film. I have to point this out. This is a film about vampires, uh, and Eli becomes the vampire uh, of 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 the of the film. Uh, and it's unusual in that because Sweden doesn't really have much in the way of a kind of vampire mythos. There isn't really much that exists in that space yet. The notion of this kind of predatory suburban vampire attempting to cover their tracks during the the kind of in, it, during the kind of cold 1970s estates of, of Stockholm seems somehow quite fitting. It almost seems like quite a natural pairing. So it's a Swedish horror story that I think is more of a kind of tale of childhood romance and childhood trauma than it is about outright horror. So don't go in there expecting lots of blood. I mean, there's a bit, but don't expect there to be lots of, of, of kind of uh, cliched or, tr or, 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 or fairly standardised vampire tropes in here. Uh, it, it's about a friendship. Uh, we soon learn that Eli, uh, or Eli, Eli is not necessarily all that she appears to be. Uh, and, you know, vampire films frequently address this issue of, like, the aged body. You know, primarily they, they focus on the, the vast age of their typically adult monsters. Uh, you know, like figures like Lestat or Count Dracula, who have survived hundreds of years, for instance. This film joined a handful of, fil of others that invert this trope by focusing upon the, you know, the, the arrested childhood development of the vampire figure. Before, you know, they are turned into vampires before they are mature and therefore they're unable to reach full adulthood. And obviously this brings with all the more sorts of kind of compromises in terms of how they hunt their prey, in terms of how they relate to their prey. You know, this is not a film about the, the kind of a lustful sexuality of, 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 the, of the vampire as a seductress of some kind. You know, this is a film which focuses upon quite uncomfortable ideas, really, and it forces us through the kind of blends of children to, to address those uncomfortable ideas. You know, what happens when we deny a child their childhood what happens when we deny them their ability to to, to grow up and mature and to become uh, an adult you know what what happens when we force them to grow up too soon you know these are kind of questions that are often tied to childhood when it comes to like the abuse narratives and i think there's like a kind of latent underpinning uh, you know that, that that idea kind of underpins often in an unspoken way this narrative and if anyone's ever read the book which uh, i recommend you do hunt out if you haven't haven't done so before you know that 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 idea becomes much more explicit within within the the novel itself. I think this quest this 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 film adaptation asks all sorts of questions about childhood sexuality and its in slash appropriateness, uh, particularly when we see, uh, you know, childhood sexuality kind of transposed to the insatiable vampiric figure, you know, who can never quite get enough blood or or, or satisfaction. So, this film looks beautiful. Uh, I mean, it's 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 just gorgeous to look at, uh, and you're better off watching it on on as big a screen as possible with the best kind of possible like version of the film. But but it's, you know, we'll take what we can. 
Uh, it was praised for it, its beauty. Uh, Karina Chikana in the LA Times said it was sinister but gorgeous and compelling. Uh, I mean, I've included a few of the, the standard things I include on these on these presentation videos. It's Metacritic score, has it as a must-see, 82 out of 100. User scores even higher than that at 8.7. It's 98% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, you know, very well regarded. The audience score is not that far behind as well, so 90, 90%. This is a critical darling. You know, it invigorates the seemingly tired vampire genre by effectively mixing scares with intelligent storytelling. Uh, over on Letterboxd, it has a score of 4 out of 5 from its 1,000 fans. I give it a 4 out of 5 as well. Uh, whereas on IMDb, it's weighted average is 7.9 out of 10 uh, from 206,000 plus reviews. So I think you're in for a treat if you haven't seen it before. Uh, the... Infamous film critic Roger Ebert called it the best modern vampire film. Twilight fans may disagree, uh, but there we go. Uh, Bruce Dion's writing in the New Yorker said, It's a remarkably moving horror tale about a pale, bullied 12-year-old boy and his first love who happens to be a vampire. That's a fair summary. Uh, Eric Price writing in Esquire said, At Oscar's age, every girl, vampire or not, knew something we didn't, and it was terrifying. Somehow let the right one in, pulls this off without copping out on creating a genuinely scary horror movie. Scary. Mm. Disturbing, perhaps. Unnerving, I think, is perhaps a better a better synonym for this. Never mind. Uh, Mark Commode gave it uh, his film of the year in 2009. Uh, he said, The chilliest place on earth is now Sweden, thanks to Let the Right One In, a masterfully atmospheric reinvention of the die-hard vampire flick. So, uh, it premiered in Gotham, at the Gothenburg Film Festival, I think in 2008, where the director won the Nordic Film Prize. It subsequently played at several other film festivals, the Tribeca Film Festival in New York, uh, where it won the Founders Award for Best Narrative Feature. It won awards in the Edinburgh Film Festival. It won the Rotten Tomatoes Critical Consensus Award. It won the International Fantastic Film Festival in Switzerland Award, where it got the, the Millier de Jean award you know this i mean i'm not going to list all of the awards that it that it uh that it achieved i mean i'll just point you to the kind of wikipedia entry page if if, if you haven't seen it before here maybe i can flash it up on screen uh oh no i can't because of obs that i'm using never mind just just go over to the wikipedia page you will see it won and was nominated for dozens upon dozens of awards except the academic the the american the American Film Academy Awards. It didn't get nominated for an Oscar because of confusion over its um, release date because it was released and then it was re-released at a later point and it fell between the 81st and 82nd Film Awards and consequently, uh, basically, it wasn't submitted for for appraisal. I'm pretty sure it would have won if it had been submitted for the Best Foreign Film, but never mind. Uh, it was remade or rebooted or retold a couple of years later uh, uh, with an English language version uh, with the Superman film director Matt Reeves. Was it, was it Superman that he directed? No, Cloverfield film director Matt Reeves uh, in place. Uh, that film called Let Me In uh, was okay. I mean, it's worth watching if you haven't seen it. Uh, I don't think it quite compares to... Uh, this film, uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but if you if you're looking for an English language kind of vampire film that attempts to adapt the the same novel, then you know you can look at that. It's all right. It's not it's not so bad. Um, but there are a variety of questions that we can think about. Then I've got a few things to to kind of uh, point you towards. Now, don't forget. I think this. I said I think this film asks all sorts of uncomfortable questions about Arrested Development, uh, and I think you know you can we can address those in the uh, in the session. Uh, on Friday, but uh, let's let's kind of like look at some questions or things to consider. I'd like you to think about this: who or what is the monster in this film? Clearly, Eli is a vampire, but is Eli the monster of this film? Is Eli the unspoken kind of problem in this film? What do you think the film says about aging and age uh, and agelessness and about monstrousness more generally? Are we presented with an aging body kept forever young? I want to be forever young. Uh, what is this film doing? What is it saying about ageing and age? If the traditional vampire trope is to present the monster as something old and ancient and therefore uncanny, 
because it looks young and it looks contemporary. How does this film address societal attitudes towards aging and address the development? You know, how does this film handle this idea, this, 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 this notion of getting old? Thirdly, as a vampire film, this is heavily focused upon childhood and adolescence, giving Oscar's age, 12, and Eli's age, which I'll not ruin for you. Does this focal point negate some of the usual vampire lore and tropes regarding sex that abound in other vampire films? Is it even possible to broach the subject of sex, given the age of the main antagonist in this, uh, in this film? Uh, Thomas Alfredson, the director, uh, when he was, he was interviewed, and he, and he said for, for him, and I'll, I'll quote, he says, Let the right one in is very much about the anger that this tormented boy is carrying. He's not able to do anything with it. He can talk to his parents because he's shy and he's afraid of them interfering. He cannot talk to his teachers. He has no friends. So for him, the vampire in the story is the body of all this anger. I had similar experiences as a boy that moved me when I read the book. The feeling of wanting revenge without having the ability to get it. So there's that. You know, This is a film that's not necessarily about vampires. It's about anger. Disgusts. Uh, so... Something we often associate with puberty, I guess, is the point I'm trying to get at here with the age point. Question four. One reading of this film suggests that Eli is the manifestation of Oscar's latent desire for violence and violent retribution, tying to this notion of anger. To what extent do you agree with this or disagree with this reading? That Eli is the manifestation of Oscar's desire for violent retribution. Ties to Alfredson's points there as well. And finally, what do you make of the role of Eli's familiar, Harkin, or Hawken? How do you pronounce that? Harkin? What is his motivation for, for staying close to Eli? Does Harkin occupy a similar role to Oscar? Do they change places? You know, is there something that we need to comment on in terms of the age relationship here, the dynamic? That's something to, to tease out in this film. Of course, I'm always interested in hearing your thoughts when it comes to you know the, the, the this film and films like it. We don't have to restrict ourselves, of course, to only looking at Let the Right One In. I'm pretty sure I played quite a few clips in the video lecture. Uh, so please, you know, feel free to bring up and raise any other related topic, topical points of discussion. I'll see you on Friday in class. <laughs>